Hi, I'm Carrie, and welcome to this episode of So Darn Fun. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some of the pattern work that I've been going through on making the Saxon 9th century gown for the author Octavia Randolph. It's a winter gown, and it is a gown that might be worn by one of the characters in her novels by the name of Modwin. And as you can see, we've got the base already done, um, mostly done, just the form of it. I haven't got the neck or any of that done. But we are working on the blue over gown and the alterations that I've made to the pattern in order to make that. You'll see the guide photo in this episode um, so that you know what we're comparing it to. And so hang with us. Let's go. Hey, you stole my apron. Look, the Saga series has a merch shop. I'll put the link in the description. This is one of the items. It's Renvig's apron and I love it. And obviously so does Helga. Here we are at the table and the focus today is a 9th century Saxon gown. I'm going to put a slide up here so you can see what it looks like. This is the model that we're going after. For those who have been part of the Circle of Caridwin discussion group on Facebook, you will have seen maybe a couple entries that I've made of the construction of the red gown that goes underneath. We're not going to discuss that one today. Well, we're going to work on the blue over gown. But what I have here is the pattern that I use for the red gown. This is the back and this is the front. And we're gonna use these pieces to change a little bit and make the blue gown that goes over the top. Because we know that this pattern fits Octavia, we can go ahead and use it, just alter it a little bit to make the shape that we want. So as you can see, they're very, very long patterns. We don't need that length for the blue. So I've done a little bit of math. <laughs> not my strong point and have done some ratios and tried to figure out the proportions of that it's kind of a high low the 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 outer dress is higher in the front and lower in the back and so just doing some ratios i figured out what i think it's going to be in the front and in the back and as you can see if you're not used to patterns these are half patterns so like this is this is the front, but this would be the center front seam right here, so it would be mirrored on the other side. And I've drawn, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's a line right here that I think is what I'm going to try for the shaping of the front. And then again, the shaping on the back where it kind of scoops down to a longer, a longer skirt in the back. So what I'm going to do with these is I've made duplicates of these in brown paper, but I've made them shorter. They don't need to be the whole length. It's just a waste of paper. So I've made them shorter, this length right here, and I will bring them in so you can see them. There's the front. There's the back. Right here. And I have these, I've made these markings on here. So what I'm gonna do, since I already have copies of these, looks like I forgot to make some of the markings on this. Don't need these for right now. But if you'll look in the photo up there, that the dress falls over the bust and then it, it seems to kind of flare a little bit, but it is cinched in with a, with a sash. You can see the tassels hanging off to the side, which means the dress needs to be opened up and flared out just a bit. So the way to do that is that we have to slash the patterns here and spread them a little bit. So let's just take one pattern from here. Let's take the front. And I've marked a, a position right here 
where I think it starts to get fuller below this point. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna slash all the way down to the hem. Actually, we can cut this part off. And then again over here, because we're gonna make a center front seam. If you'll notice, there's, there's a ribbon that goes down the center front. Well, I'm going to utilize that seam to help add a little bit of flare to the front instead of putting it on the fold. So my first, first thing I'm gonna do is cut off this here that I don't need. And honestly, when I put all this together, I'm gonna do a muslin first. And for some of our saga, saga fans around the world, the term muslin might be a little bit unfamiliar, but it would be called a calico in places like Australia. We're gonna make a, a mock garment first, of course. I'm not gonna cut into that good wool that Octavia got until I know for sure this is gonna work. So, and if it doesn't work, I'll tell you, if it needs to make changes, you'll, you'll be there on the journey with me. And then uh, we can make the changes we need. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut as straight as I can down here, up to that line. Right there. Then I'm going to cut but I'm not gonna cut all the way through where I just did that first one. I'm just gonna cut barely just so that I have a hinge. The reason for that is I now can take this piece, let's get a good angle here, and I can rotate it like this out as far as I want, and it preserves the shape of the side seam and I don't have to try to figure out where that hemline is gonna be. All I do is pretty much draw from here to here, just kind of even it out and redo the hem there. But I'm gonna also do that in the front. So let's first do this slash. Fullness do we need? Here I'd like to show you how I lower that armhole. I'm going to show you on the back. Here's the armhole as it was on the pattern. And here's the mark for how low I want to make it. This is two inches lower. This is the also a copy of the original pattern. I'm going to lay it on top. And you see here I've, oops, here I've drawn out that seven eighths that I wanted to add to the center front and back. And I've made a little dotted line that shows where the original pattern fell. What I wanna do is I wanna lay this pattern on top. I'm paying close attention to the armhole and I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna pull down the pattern right along this line so it stays even with that until my underarm hits that line. This is a method you can use on any pattern if you needed to make that armhole bigger. There we go, it's at the bottom there. It doesn't matter that this sticks over because you see up here it's wider, so of course it's gonna be wider down here. And you're just gonna follow this shape right here. Draw that in. Now it's not gonna make an exact the right shape. It's not gonna make the exact right shape right here. So when I take this off, this is what we have. And this where it, it kind of makes this corner here, you're just gonna blend that in. If you don't have a French curve, you can freehand it. There we go. So now we've got our new armhole. It comes like this. And we're gonna get rid of this right here. And that's how we do it. Let's hope this works. <laughs> you can see in the photo here, it's a little bit wider, but not a whole lot wider than the red. 
I think it's got to be a little bit so that it doesn't pull tight against it, but so that it lies relaxed. So why don't we try, let's do like an inch on each of these. That would give us four inches extra in the front. And if we do the same to the back, it would be four inches extra in the back. I'll show you that process on the front. Here's the sleeve pattern. It's actually half the sleeve. This part goes on the fold, and remembering we are adding two inches to this sleeve cap to fit into that larger armhole that we made. So I'm gonna take this all the way to the edge, and this will lie on the fold when I cut it on the fabric. I'm gonna cut that out, and then I'm gonna use that pattern to tailor the shape of the sleeve to make a new pattern, and I'll show you how I do that. It's very similar to what we did on the body patterns. If you notice, this is very short. This sleeve is from the actual, the red dress. Again, we're reusing that pattern, but the sleeve was real, real, real long, causing that uh, ruching around the wrist. But we only need about 12 inches of this sleeve because the sleeve only goes to about the elbow on the dress that we're doing. So I'm gonna trace this, and once I have it cut out, I'll show you what I'm gonna do when I lay it out and create a piece that has more of that bell shape like we see in the photo. Here's the sleeve cut out. And if you see these stripes here, those are indicating where I'm gonna slash this sleeve from the bottom all the way up to almost the top, but not quite, so that we can spread the bottom of the sleeve to make that nice bell at the bottom. This sleeve, this is half. This would be the, the middle of the shoulder here. This is the underarm is about seven inches. And I wanna double the fullness that we have at the bottom. So because it's seven inches, we're gonna spread this seven, which is gonna give us a nice fullness. I know this is gonna look a little bit crazy, but this is how you do it. So I need to tape these down at one inch intervals. So I'll do that and then I will come back. Now here's what it looks like once it's all spread out and taped down. Now I'm going to cut that out and we'll see what it looks like. It's beginning not to look like the sleeve it once was, is it? Here are the pieces all cut out. Each one's a double layer. Now let's sew them together and hope it works. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And on first glance, actually it's not that bad. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out first run through. But keep in mind that the purpose of the muslin is to be able to tailor it and to kind of um, you know, keep chipping away at the best shape that we want. The first things that stand out to me, um, I do like the length in the front and the length in the back and the taper I think is, is good. But what I don't like is the fullness that I added at the side. There's already a lot of fullness at the side and so adding more onto it just made these um, like this. It's just, it, it wants to kind of fold over itself. And in the guide photo, you'll see that that's not the case it kind of seems to lie pretty smoothly. Now also keeping in mind that the guide photo is a painting. 
And so a painting doesn't necessarily mimic what actual fabric would do. So I have to also keep, keep that in mind as I go through what's realistic, what's reasonable, and what's not. But I think that taking some of this fullness out would benefit the look of this. And I'm also rethinking my interpretation of the photo where we see that there's fullness in the red gown underneath. And I thought that the over gown would have to have more fullness. I don't really think that's the case now that I'm looking at it. It seems that as long as this is full enough, that this could have more fullness under here and it would still be fine as long as there's enough, enough room to walk and to have it have some ample, a um, little bit of, I don't know, if swishing form is the right term. But I think that that if I take, take off more fullness than I even added would work on the sides. Leaving that little inch that I put on the front I think is really good for the front. So on this side, I've pinned in, I pinned out some of the fullness. So you'll see this much I'm going to take out. I only added this much, this much, I only added an inch, but I'm going to take out more than an inch. So, and then you'll see if you can see this taper here. I'm going to add that to the front so the front will fall more like this. So if I take out this much fullness, I think that's still going to work really well. The second thing I didn't like is under this sleeve here, and it's kind of hard to tell because this, this side doesn't have an arm in it because these dress forms, they only come with one arm and it's the right arm. Left arm doesn't have any, any actual arm in it. But this bunches up here. There's a lot of bunching under the armpit. That's because there's too much fabric. On this side, I've shown you, I've pinned that out a little bit. I've taken a tuck under the arm to kind of pinch out the fabric that does not need to be there. And I can pin it out all the way up to where the fold on the pattern was. I'm gonna show you on the table with the patterns what those changes are gonna look like. So let's try that. And then what I'll do on this muslin is I will sew the changes into this muslin on the arm. And then on the side, I will, because I don't have any more muslin, I'll just take pieces, oops, on this side over here, where I will add a taper to the front and then be able to take in the sides. If that makes any sense, if it doesn't, that's okay. Just skip over this. Um, we'll eventually get to it. One other thing I do like about how this muslin turned out was I like the sleeve fullness. I think that just about does it. So I'm gonna leave that the same. I think that just about is like the guide photo. And when it's made in the real wool, it'll have a little bit more body so you'll be able to see it. I think that'll work really well. All right, here we are at the table with the sleeve. I've plucked off just one sleeve to show you. This is the sleeve, and as weird as it looks, and as hard as it might be to imagine, this is the shoulder seam, even though it looks more like a slight U, and this is the sleeve hem down here. This is the tuck that I pinned out on the one side here. So what I did was I took my pattern, which normally fits like this, and I have pinned that same tuck out of my pattern. Pinned that tuck and pinned it all the way out to this part, which is the fold. Pinned it out to nothing, so it tapers to, to nothing at the fold. Now, you see the problem here, and that's that the fold is a straight line on the fabric, but on my pattern, it is now not. It is now a, a bump. So what on earth do we do with that? Well, I'll tell you. Let's get rid of this pin here for a second. Yeah, we just get rid of it. It will not be missed. So there, now we have a nice straight fold again. And I will refold this piece and I will cut it out again with this pattern. And then we'll try that on the sleeves and see how it's going to work. There, 
I'm liking this shaping much better. I've taken in this bulk under both of these sleeves and I think it falls so much, so much nicer. And then on the sides, I took out that bulk. I added a piece here to add more taper to the front because all of that was taken out. And I've trimmed the sides down just a little bit. So we've got a really nice, I'll turn it this way, a really nice curve right there. And without that bulk, there's not that flap of extra fabric that just was too much. We'll deal with the neckline later, uh, but right now I'm just looking at the hem. I think that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this muslin apart. I'm going to redraw it on some pattern paper so that I have a pattern that I can keep for a long time if I need to use it again. So it's a go.